Well, hey everyone, how are you today? I am Carissa Wiley from sprinkledwithglitter.com and we are live today. We're gonna play with palettes and I thought that the, this was the perfect time to do it with Concord and Ninth's new color collection just hitting the shops yesterday. There's so much inspiration out there. There is an Instagram hop if you've missed that. Um, be sure that you check that. I am Carissa Wiley on Instagram, so you can find me there. We have a lot of people in the chat already, and I love that you guys are there interacting with me and with each other because I'm hoping that this can be kind of an interactive live today because we're gonna play with palettes and I really want your feedback on all of this. So I see Nancy and Mindy and Dee and Sue and Debbie are all here. I'm just scrolling up. I know um, Debbie is from Edmonton, Alberta. So um, not across the pond, but across the border from us there in Canada. So welcome to you. Um, I love this new palette from Concord and Ninth. I think it rounds out their rainbow so well and I'm excited to play with it. I've obviously been playing with it for a little while, but I wanted to take the color swatch kit and um, kind of play a little more with just color. Not trying to create a project, but we're gonna create some swatch cards using that color swatch kit that is a part of the April release from Concord and Ninth to kind of, um, light a little fire under our inspiration um, booties. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> we need a fire under our, um, under our buns sometimes. And um, I think playing with color is a great way to do that. Hi, Carol. Hi, Cindy. Welcome in. Hi, Peggy. I'm so glad you're all joining me here today. If you are catching this on the replay, make sure that you say hey in the comments below as well. Um, let me know which of the Concord and Ninth colors, the new colors is your favorite, or you can let me know which one of the, maybe one of the older colors is your favorite. You can do that too, I'm totally okay with that. Um, but I just wanna make sure you say hey to me there. And for all of those watching either on live or replay, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that thumbs up, share it with a friend or just leave comments. Um, that really encourages me. I love doing these lives. And the funny thing is I was thinking the other day, I've only ever done these lives with Concord and Ninth releases and that has in no way been intentional. It's just worked out in my schedule. And so um, I'm looking forward to doing more of these and including other brands as well. So. Just thought I'd throw that out there. A couple of things coming up. Um, I am preparing for teaching a live in-person event at, at the end of this month, so in a couple of weeks, up in Bass Lake near Yosemite in California. I think there might be some seats left. Um, it's called the Great Yosemite Stamp Escape, and um, it's an in-person class up near Bass Lake. Beautiful scenery four classes over two days. They're three hour classes each, lots of projects. Martha is here from Norman, Oklahoma. You live right near my son. My son is in Norman, Oklahoma as well. Um, so I just saw that and it was like a shiny object. I had to, I had to mention that. But um, so I'm preparing to teach at that live event. So that's coming up. It's called the Great Yosemite Stamp Escape. It's put on by the Cat's Meow up in Oakhurst, California. It's actually a brick and mortar store. And I am featuring Concord and Ninth products in that class. And I'm excited to teach that class and do something in person. I do a lot of online teaching, but I don't get to do a lot of in-person teaching. So um, this is really, really um, exciting for me. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the Paper Crafters Get Organized Summit. It is all about getting organized. What works, what doesn't work. There are 27 speakers from all over the world contributing to this summit and you can go for free. I have a link to that in the YouTube description. So if you're interested in registering for that, I will be speaking at that. It is actually on the same weekend as the Great Yosemite Stamp Escape. So my content is pre-recorded. Um, but you can catch that. And I'm talking about how to create a workspace that works 
for you. So um, that's my topic there. So those are a couple of things I wanted to touch on. And let's just, shall we just move down to the desktop and just have a look at all of this beautiful goodness. You can see I've actually been busy prepping a whole lot of things here because I wanted to be able to just get in and go for it and um, make some palettes, color palettes and play with those. And as you'll notice, I've actually created several of these ahead of time. And these are palettes that I have created with actual ink swatches. So if you don't know, Concord and Ninth released their 2023 color collection. It's an in, in addition to their previous palette or their current palette, and they've released 25 brand new colors. There are some gorgeous colors. I actually have the entire collection of Concord and Ninth cardstock here represented, and that's what we're gonna play with today. But these previous color swatches that I've created were stamped with the inks and then added to these color swatch cards. Today, I thought we would not only look at how to create this with the inks, if you wanted to do that, but also um, just play with the card stocks and create some other palettes to have on hand for when we're lacking inspiration. Um, and just kind of go off of, I'm gonna pull inspiration from Concord and Ninth's Instagram page. I'm going to pull from a couple of the people from yesterday's Instagram hop. I'm not copying their projects because I'm not making projects. I'm just creating palettes that I can then go back to and reference when I'm feeling stuck or I don't know what I wanna do or use. Now you can see, of course, in true Car Carissa fashion, <laughs> I have this on a gold binder ring. You can grab whatever ring you want to hold yours together, but I think gold is better. <laughs> and so all of the um, tag reinforcers at the top of my color swatch cards are also gold. And as I've mentioned before, I have done a lot of prep work. Now, the products that I'm gonna be using today are the Concord and Ninth, card stocks, which I have die cut with this swatch book die set here. So I have all of these die cut from the various colors of Concord and Ninth card stock. I'm using the large tag to hold them all on just like these. And then I am using the stamp set, but I want to show you what I've done because I did a lot of prep work for this live in order to make this go a little bit more smoothly for you guys. Um, because I didn't think that you'd want to just watch me die cut and stamp. So all of these colors here, every single one of these pieces of cardstock are die cut from the Concord and Ninth cardstock. It is all, somebody help me out, 48 colors, <laughs> I think, of Concord and Ninth cardstock. And I have stamped the name of the color on each of these pieces of cardstock. So look at that. Is that not a beautiful sight? Um, by the way, this little tray that I'm using, it's actually a tasting tray for like hors d'oeuvres and stuff. I actually purchased them for that in-person event that I'm talking about because I thought it would be perfect to house a few little ink cubes to share between two participants and also to keep their small die cuts kind of rounded up as they're working so they wouldn't lose those. So I'm gonna, I have something planned for these. They came in a huge pack, way more than I needed, but I grabbed one of them today and I thought, well, those will hold my little cardstock strips really nicely. So I've also die cut several of these cards. I've started putting the tag toppers or the reinforcers on. I didn't finish that because um, I'm running in from a meeting that I was just at. I do, when I went ahead and put out all of my ink swatches that I created, and I do have um, a full video just showing you the swatching process of these. I also have a video on, on YouTube here talking about how I create my ink swatches for my swatch book. Um, so I just wanted you to see the array of colors here. These are just the new colors, so they don't include the previous colors. So I have those here for you to look at. 
This is just beautiful to look at. And this is the order that I have all of my card stocks in here today. Concord and Ninth Synthes um, with the collection for me to kind of reference there. And yes, this does take a little bit of time, but I have six of each of these colors. I'm going to have enough for so many swatches and I'll keep some of these on hand for when I'm inspired by a different project and I can quickly create a swatch book card there. So anyway, you guys, I really want your help today in creating some of these swatches or swatch book entries. I don't know, what are we gonna call them? Just cards, swatch cards? Because I need to go out of my comfort zone. Now, comfort zones are great. I mean, because they make creating easy. But sometimes we need to explore new avenues of creativity. And that's what I'm looking to do today. So I thought I would show you guys all this and then we could chat. You guys can make suggestions. But before we get into actually creating it, I wanted to show you the way that I found if you want to make these with ink swatches rather than cardstock swatches, say you only purchase the um, inks and you don't have the card stocks, but you want to create your own little swatch book like I've done here with the inks. I want to show you how I kind of figured this out, how I think it's easy to do. So I'm going to bring in my mini Misty. I have some of these die cut from some white card stock. And what I did was I'm just grabbing, you guys can't see this, but I'm turned away grabbing a piece of scrap paper here. I should have had this kind of ready to go, but I forgot about this part, quite honestly. I'm just going to cut a piece of scrap cardstock here to place inside my mini Misty. I can't even remember how big it needs to be. So I'll just trim this down. It doesn't even have to be perfect. It's just really to protect the inside of my Misty because when you're doing this, you get a lot of ink when you're stamping a solid area of ink over and over again. So what I like to do is take this scrap paper, put it in my Mini Misty, and then I like to just grab the little color swatch um, stamp here and mount it onto my Misty stamping tool. Now. I'm not gonna try to place this here and try to get this, you know, right on there right away. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna show you how I cheated it. And this is how I created the swatches that I've already shown you. I'm gonna actually ink it up. I'm using Tide Pool ink. This is one of my favorite new colors. I just grabbed it. They're all to the left of me here. I'm gonna stamp it onto the scrap cardstock or paper here. Hi, Debbie. You're late, it's okay. We're just getting started with all the palette play here, so you haven't missed anything. So now I have this kind of as a reference on my scrap piece of cardstock here, and I can just lay my white cardstock right over that. I'm not gonna hold it in place because I'm just quickly stamping this. I'm just gonna place it to where I can see a little bit of that Tide Pool ink all the way around it because the stamp is slightly bigger than the actual die cut. And then what I can do is just ink up the stamp and stamp it right onto my cardstock. And while that looks splotchy and kind of um, modeled <laughs> right now, I will tell you that these all dry back really beautifully. In fact, in the swatch video that I have here on YouTube, I did not re-stamp any of these swatches. When you, you'll notice that when I first stamp them, they look kind of, like I said, blotchy and mottled. This is how they dry back. They dry back really smooth and even and beautiful and true to color. So just keep that in mind. When you um, first stamp it, it may not look the greatest, but it will look great, I promise. So it'll dry back and look great. So if you're creating it with the stamp, that's kind of what I would recommend doing. That makes it the quickest and easiest, in my opinion. I'm sure some of you have some other tips and tricks out there. If you do, you can throw them in the, in the comments. But I thought I would start, and I'm actually gonna cheat here. 
And I'm going to go to the Concord and Ninth Instagram and I am pulling up their sneak peek of this color swatch because I saw some beautiful color combinations on here and I thought what we could do is we could use these as a jumping off point and then we could change out some of the colors as well and kind of play with the palettes. That's exactly what this is all about. Hi, Laura, welcome from sunny Ohio. It is sunny here in California today as well, which is good and not great at the same time because we have all that snow that's getting ready to melt. If you've heard about the potential flooding in California, I live near there and um, I don't think my home is in danger. I don't think it is, <laughs> but we are expecting um, a lot of water coming off the mountains this spring. So the heat and bringing all of that sun in is definitely something that we are keeping an eye on. So I am looking at this Instagram post and I'm seeing one that has nectar, sorbet, avocado, harbor, and blueberry. Now, while nectar and sorbet tend to be colors that I would use a lot, I wouldn't necessarily think to pair them with the true blues like the harbor and the blueberry. So I'm going to pull these out and start building this palette. Now, the cool thing about this is you could either stamp onto the cardstock like I've done, or you could stamp below. I just, for ease of all of this, I thought it would be great to just stamp it right on the cardstock. Avocado, I have these in um, color order, so I kind of know where to pull from. And then Harbor and Blueberry. Now here is where this palette really deviates from something that I would normally do. And quite honestly, this feel, it's very beautiful. It feels like a lot of blue to me. So I'm having a seat here because we're gonna do a few of these together. So this is where the palette play really comes in because I'm loving this, obviously. This feels beautiful. It doesn't feel like me. Now I'm going to resist the urge to go to my normals, which I would normally pair like a sea glass or the tide pool with this. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull out this harbor and I'm gonna go a little bit softer. I'm gonna bring in powder instead. And this is gonna soften the palette. And while it's still a little bit out of my norm, it's gonna make it feel a little more true to me. Does that make sense? And so this is kind of how I really um, start playing with colors, is oftentimes I will find a palette that I like and then just maybe switch out one or two of the colors to make it feel a little more Carissa-ized. <laughs> I don't know how to put that. And then what I might do is instead of this blueberry, let's pull in midnight and see what that does. So I'm trying to keep everything in order so I can grab these easily. Ooh, I really like that. So this feels a little bit more, um, this feels a little bit more like something I would create with. And while these colors are not something I would normally grab right away, this is something that I really feel like I could be inspired by. And once again, I'm just using their color palette as a jumping off point and then kind of building around that. So what I wanna do is this set includes a spacer. So um, I'm just gonna use this as a spacer. And then I'll start just grabbing my tape runner here and I'm gonna add some tape runner to the back. Now, we can do this with some other palettes that we've seen along the hop yesterday or over on the Concord and Ninth Instagram account. So if you guys want to see something like this, kind of a change up, like a using a palette as a jumping off point and then kind of changing it up, 
you can let me know in the comments whose project that you were kind of inspired by, and then maybe we can kind of move from there. So I'm gonna go with the nectar first. I'm just using this um, spacer to help me get everything lined up evenly because I do plan on keeping these and using these as a tool in my craft room. So then I have the sorbet and I'll just place that there. You like that darker blue? That darker blue actually really does change up the palette, doesn't it? So like I said, I used their palette as a jumping off point. I've used three of the five colors that they originally had and technically I've used the same color family for the ones that I've substituted, but I've made, I've chosen different tones to give it a slightly different feel. So I thought it would be fun to kind of play with these today to see them in action and to really build these are really tools that you can use. So I'm just using this little spacer to make sure everything gets onto my card straight and evenly spaced. And there we have it. So the next time I go to create, I have a pre-built palette. So that's palette number one. So let's move on to a second palette. We'll put that to the side. I'm gonna put my phone on mute here because I have, I have some people chatting with me over here in the text messages and I need to focus on this. Now, one that I really love that really surprised me is this dragon fruit color. Now, Christina Werner created a card using this. Let's see if I can bring her up here. I, maybe I should have had these written out ahead of time. I don't know. But, so there's hers. She used Dragon Fruit, Midnight, Aqua Sky, Sunflower, and Pebble. So Dragon Fruit, Midnight. And I already know that I'm probably gonna change up one of these. Aqua Sky, let's see, this is Aqua Sky. Sunflower, which the Sunflower is a fabulous yellow. I would call um, the Concord and Ninth yellows as, I would say that they are very sophisticated yellows. And I really like that about their yellows. They are yellows that don't necessarily feel super like raincoat yellow. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you know what I mean. Like primary yellow. They have just a little bit of tone to them that really help them, they really make them feel like something that I will use. And so I think that that is um, a really good call on their part is not to make those yellows too primary because I think we'll use them more it's kind of like something you would use in your house for a yellow versus something you would use on a raincoat. <laughs> Does that make sense? So I have a couple of you out there who really love the dragon fruit as well. And already I know that for me in my palette, I am going to substitute this aqua sky. This aqua sky is a beautiful color, but I tend to lean a little more towards sea glass. Now, while that is a very, very subtle change, I don't know if the camera quite picks it up, but look at this. Look at how that changes that palette. Subtle change, but it feels like something that's a little more me to me. And so that is something that I'll do oftentimes. Now, I don't know, I'm kind of considering changing out the midnight as well. Ooh, this is beautiful. I love this. Now that is, I actually really like this as a four color palette here. 
Yes, Fig is one of my favorite. Tide Pool is one of my favorites. You guys leave your favorites in the comments and we'll try to build palettes around them, some altered palettes. So my thought in taking this, and I probably made something very similar but I might take this peacock instead of the midnight and bring that in instead. Now, I do wanna look at my color swatches because I've built something similar, but I don't think that I had, so I had this. So this has a couple of the same colors. And instead of the lemongrass here, we're getting like sunflower, which is a little less green than the lemon fruit or the lemongrass. And then we're bringing in the pebble. So I think that this is a really beautiful palette. And this is one that I definitely want to save as something that I'll use again. So we'll start building this up again. And you know what? In order to make this a little easier to use, I'm gonna put some repositionable adhesive on the back of it. That may be a mistake. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see as time goes on. So are you guys getting the vibe here? It, I mean, I hope that you guys can see how you can kind of mix and match colors and kind of get something that feels very similar to something else, but has just a little twist in it as well. And maybe we'll, for this next one, I'm gonna try to bring in the Briar Rose. Now Briar Rose is a beautiful color, but it's not something that um, I've ever really used before, I don't think. It has a lot of purple in it. I'm, as you all know, probably, if you've, followed me or watched me here for a while, then you probably know I'm more of a pink girl. Nectar, Sorbet, and Nutmeg. Nectar is like my favorite new color. In fact, I'm freaking out a little bit because <laughs> I need more Nectar cardstock and I don't know when I'm gonna be able to get it, so I'm just kind of waiting for it. I need it partially for the in-person event that I'm teaching, so I need to create a couple things with that. And so I am just like, I'm kind of in the hoarder status of the Nectar cardstock right now. I'm really trying to conserve it. Every little piece, I'm not usually the frugal or save everything kind of crafter, but right now with this um, Nectar cardstock, I just, I need it, I need to buy it by the ream. So, okay, so there we have it. This is based off of or inspired by Christina Werner's color palette from the blog hop or the Instagram hop yesterday, but we've changed it up just a little bit to Carissa eyes it just a bit, and I can really see myself using this palette. So that is palette number two. We have some very different palettes here, and I'm being inspired by other people and finding ways to kind of bring them in and bring in different colors than what I normally use. So let's look at, who should we look at next? I'm gonna actually go back, I think, and look at the Concord and Ninth site again. There was another one. Well, no, let's do this. Let's create, let's create like a rainbow. Let's do that. Let's create a rainbow palette. So we're gonna start out with a bright rainbow. My inks. Yes, you can definitely do any of these things with any inks or card stocks that you have. You're not limited to doing this with just one company and keep in mind, you can mix and match the inks and the card stocks that you have from different companies. I just, I am trying to really learn this palette and get familiar with it. And I find that just playing with, with the colors a little bit really helps to familiarize me with the colors. So let's start with a bright rainbow. So let's start with a red. It's really not red, it's pink. 
but we're gonna call it red. We're gonna see. This is an orange I would normally do, which I'm not feeling the dragon fruit with that. So let's go, maybe we'll go. Ooh, I kind of like that. Now a yellow or a yellow green. Sometimes I skip yellow and I go to like a yellow green. So it brings in some yellow and it brings in some green, but it's not really one or the other necessarily. Does that make sense? So I kind of go over that. Um, yellow, let's do a green, which I'm gonna go with juniper. And how about blueberry for a little rainbow there? Love that. So that's rainbow one. Let's go with a pale rainbow. So this is gonna be a softer rainbow. Ballet slipper, nectar, that's my red, orange. I know I'm using pink, but that's just, that's what I do here, okay? <laughs> pink and red are the same to you. Thank you, Debbie. I'm so glad you agree. Um, so pink, you could bring in a true red if you wanted, but I really like, and sometimes I'll skew my rainbows to have even more of like, oh, this is actually really good too. Mm. We'll think about that one because I like the honeysuckle as well. So sometimes I skew my rainbow and bring in heavier weighted on the pinks and orange and use less of the blues and greens. So sometimes you can bring in like three or four of these and then just bring in a couple of these. And that changes the way the rainbow will look as well. Let's go, let's try honeycomb for this. Orange, yellow, sea glass is what I'm thinking, green. And then blue. What about powder? Oh, you guys are gonna wanna see purple, aren't you? Hi, Carrie, my friend Carrie. Let's see. How about that? I'm actually moving the ballet slipper off. I might come in with the pink lemonade instead. So this is a more pastel rainbow. For those just coming in, we are playing with palettes today. So we are just, I've just grabbed the colors that are brand new from Concord and Ninth and I'm building some color card, color combo swatch palette things. Boy, that's a lot of words. Um, <laughs> to build some palettes to inspire me when I'm ready to create later. So I, right now I'm working on kind of a rainbow scheme. So I have a bolder, brighter rainbow on this side and a more pastel rainbow on this side. Now, I know a lot of you are purple lovers. So let's do this. Let's do that. So this is sweet pea, grapefruit, lemongrass. You know what, in fact, I'm tempted. This is a great way to just get familiar with colors too, is just play with them and substitute things out and see how they feel together. Sometimes the colors will speak to you and they'll say, nope, I don't like that. I'm gonna go back to grapefruit for this one. And the other thing we could do is bring in clementine. Now clementine is a fabulous orange. It is toned just a little. So that, even just changing this orange, do you see how that changes the feel of the palette? So you could change grapefruit or clementine. Let's go with this one. Let's go with Clementine. <laughs> yes, I did tie in gold because I gold to me is my favorite color and gold is goes with everything. So um, I brought in gold. 
I apologize if you can hear my home phone ringing. I don't know who's calling me right now because we never answer that phone. <laughs> so um, let's go ahead and do this and get some, get some stuff going here. So I just need to put that down so I can kind of judge where I need to start this at. And then I will start putting my palette down. So already we've built four palettes that are different. They're all very different. And the next one, I think, like I said, we may bring in the Briar Rose. How would the limey green look in the pink lemonade column? It would look fabulous as well. Do you see that? I would put it right there. Actually, what I might do is if I was going to bring in the, the lemongrass, it probably is a telemarketer, Tiffany. You're right. I might do this. That is really beautiful as well. So I'm trying to bring in these true blues, though, which are a little bit, um, they're not something I use a ton. So I'm trying to bring those in. This lemongrass color is one of my favorites. I just love the boldness and the brightness of it. I think it is so fun. It pairs with so many colors that you may not really think that it goes with. Six. So normally if I'm going to make a card, Marianne is asking how many colors she should put in a palette or how many colors I would put in a palette. So I'm going to tell you that six colors in a palette is a lot to use on a card unless you are doing like a rainbow stripe pattern, like striped, stripped strips of cardstock in the background and doing rainbow stripes, then six or even eight is a fine number. A comfortable place to work is usually four or five colors. Now, if you're going to use a lot of flowers and florals and stuff, then five, six, seven colors may be easy for you to use. And you can see I'm running out of room on this, so we're going to have to use the smaller spacer. Um, five, six, seven colors may be easier to use if you have a lot of florals that you can use. And that's because you can bring in some of these tealy blues and such as like a leaf color. You could bring in like a blue as a berry color. So if you're finding that these large palettes are kind of overwhelming to work with, then knock one of the colors off. Take it and just go, okay, I'm gonna set you aside. If I find a way to bring you in, I'll bring you in, but I'm gonna just use, like for instance in this one, maybe you would knock off the powder and you would just use those or the avocado. You know, so if you're finding a lot of these palettes are kind of large and hard to use, it could be the material that like the subject matter that you're working with. And for instance, like I said, this might be something I might use on like a striped background or like a floral where there's a lot of different types of flowers, a lot of greenery that I can, I have the opportunity to bring a lot of colors in on. So for the most part, I would say four, three, four, five colors is gonna be your sweet spot when you're creating with most things. Now keep in mind that with these palettes, a lot of times um, the ratio of how much you use of these colors is gonna change the way they look too. So if I take this palette here, this kind of rainbow palette that I'm creating, and I use a ton of this blue on it, it's gonna feel different than if I were to use a ton of the pink or a ton of the purple or something like that. So you can play with the balance of these palettes by adding or subtracting the amount that you use. So concentrating on like the honeysuckle as just a pop somewhere. So keep in mind that that's something that you can do as well. So now that we've learned that one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six is hard to get on these color palette cards. <laughs> 
we're gonna start a little higher on the second one and build this. Now, what else would you guys like to see here today? Because really I don't, like I said, I don't have a project planned. I really just wanted to play with color and really explore this color palette and how it all kind of works together, how different things feel. Like I said, I think we built a rainbow. I think the next thing I wanna do is try to bring in the Briar Rose. I'm glad that helped Marianne because um, I think sometimes it, these large palettes do get overwhelming. Let me, in fact, do you guys have a second? I'm getting off of my stool. I'm gonna see, yes, I do have them. I'm gonna show you a card that I created at the stamp retreat that I was at. I'm gonna show you two cards. These are eight color palette cards. So eight colors is a very hard palette to use unless you are using in, you are bringing in like the cardstock strips. So here is an example of an eight color cardstock palette. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight colors there. And I was able to bring them all in because I kept my background neutral. I just used the colors as my, the strips as my pop of color. And then I just kept all of my die cuts just this really nice clean white. So there is an example of an eight color palette. Easy to use because I'm just using it as strips. Same thing here, same eight colors. Totally different card. This is for my daughter's 19th birthday. Her birthday is tomorrow. Um, so it has these little shaker numbers. So cute. So um, I created, I used that same eight color palette here in a different way for my niece's 14th birthday. I made all of these um, at the stamp retreat that I went to. So, and Debbie, I am using all cardstock swatches today. So today I'm just using cardstock. I did show earlier how you can easily bring in those, uh, ink swatches to make these as well. So this, um, collection here of products, the color palette, swatch book dies and the swatch book stamp set have the ability to use them as either cardstock or as stamped ink swatches. These up here are actually ink swatches, but what I'm creating with today are the cardstocks. But I do want to say that Concord and Ninth has done a great job matching the cardstocks and the inks together. So they are a great match. And I think that when you get them in your stash you'll be happy with how well the colors match each other so that they they do a really good job at that I'm trying to quickly put these down so we can move on a couple of you have asked about an autumn palette or bringing in the grays we're going to do the grays next because i'm going to bring in that briar rose and we're going to create a palette with briar rose Let's create a four color palette for the Briar Rose so that it feels a little more usable too. Nine colors if you count the card base on the mom card. Yes, this is true, but for me, I don't really count my neutrals as a color. So I say that if you're using black, white, cream, or craft, black, white, cream, or craft, those all are considered neutrals, and I don't necessarily count them as one of the colors in my palette. So I could literally take this and bring this in with a neutral and it's gonna look great. Let's see, any of these. So there's a couple rainbows. Let's work with Briar Rose because it's it is a it is not a color that I have had in my stash before then. And I'm gonna bring in the pebble and the cobblestone into this. And I said four colors, we might do five. <laughs> because here's why. This really to me 
is two of the same color. So these are not different colors in my head. These are like a light and a dark of the same thing. So let's do that. Briar Rose. I'm wondering. And this is where playing is really just like, mm, that doesn't do it for me. But I'm going to go back to a favorite. Maybe not that. Maybe we're going to go a little bit less K. I like this. Now this would be great. I feel like there needs to be maybe Juniper. That's pretty. What is Peacock? Oh. Ooh, I like this. How does this feel? I like this. It is kind of a mauve color. You're right, Kimberly. And I don't think that I have a lot of mauve. Mauve makes me think of like the 80s for whatever reason. But this is like, this doesn't make me think of the 80s, but the color sound like the name mauve makes me think of the 80s. But I will tell you, this feels very modern, like a modern mauve. Modern mauve. <laughs> That's such a funny, um, I crack myself up sometimes. That's just how it is. Okay, I love this right here. And I think this could be a really beautiful pal palette to create some florals because you can use either the grays or these kind of green blues as your leaves and then you can have the briar rose as your floral colors. So what do you guys think of this? How does this feel to you? You know what else? Mushroom is a great one too. That will darken it up just a little bit. And watch this. If you, um, let's go back here. Let's do this. And so we had our Briar Rose floral palette. Um, let's do this. And you have a beautiful masculine palette. Do you see how much one color changes everything? It's a very, to me, playing with color is so much fun because you discover this as well. Um, I will probably not do a blog post with this, Tiffany, but I will um, maybe throw up a picture on my Instagram where you can see these colors listed because they are all stamped out on here. So, and I do have one, uh, a reel on my Instagram already with these shown. So there, um, but isn't that interesting how one color changes everything? I love that. So actually I kind of want to do both of these. So I'm going to put these aside. I'm going to build, I'm going to build these. I'm not going to make you guys watch me put them together but I am going to set these aside and assemble them off camera. So that I can have those on hand. And then someone said like an autumn or a winter.
Okay, let me know. I don't know if maybe my microphone died. If maybe that's what happened. That looks like maybe. So try again, try again, try to refresh again and tell me if we have sound now. I think my microphone died. I think the battery died. So can you guys hear me now? Still see the pretty color combos. I know that there's a little bit of a delay, so I'm going to give you just a second. Oh, good. We're back. Okay. Sorry about that. I was probably rambling on and on about my color palette for Christmas. I'm going to try to see. Um, I'm just looking back at the comments. And just seeing um, Tide Pool or Briar Rose Honeycomb. Okay, so I was saying while I was apparently out, this is where I would probably go for Christmas. I love a good red with a pink and then I love an aqua for Christmas. So I would probably go in something here. I might switch this out. I love pink. I think that nectar is a little too light for this. It's um, a different microphone. I had to go a different way for my microphone because I think my battery on my microphone ran out, so. Sorry about that, everyone. I'll make sure I charge my microphone next time. <laughs> so the sound's probably not as good. Um, so anyway, so here we go. Someone said um, something in the baby, like around the baby shower kind of thing. How about that for baby shower? Or they were saying honeycomb. Honeycomb is an interesting color to me. That's really beautiful there. Honeycomb's an interesting color to me because it has just the tiniest hint of green in it that um, makes it feel very sophisticated. It is definitely not green. In fact, let me show it next to Stardust because it blends so beautifully with Stardust, but um, you have just, it's, I don't know, it's a little more yellow than the Stardust, a little lighter. So there we go. Just kind of showing you guys different options here. I don't want to mess this up. But if you were looking for baby shower, I think that that um, bringing in that carnation with the Briar Rose could be really beautiful as well. Excuse me. So someone mentioned cayenne. Cayenne. What is the new pink I added? That was carnation. So this is carnation. I'll add it at the top. Can you guys see the name colors on the screen? I know they're small, so someone said cayenne for Christmas. I definitely think you could do cayenne for Christmas. I think you could do it with some cranberry. And I think you could do it with some artichoke and some evergreen and maybe this could go to me this could go Christmas or fall here this cranberry cayenne sunflower artichoke and evergreen So there you go. Pinks and yellows are always a good combo. I agree. Let's do just a quick yellow. I think you guys want to see this maybe. This is a very like purpley pink. It's got a lot of purple in it. So <laughs> you can't see it. I'm sorry. I tried to do my best. Um, I will put up a 
I will put up a shot of all of these on my Instagram. It will probably not be today. <laughs> we'll see if I can get this um, put together and added to my Instagram today, but I'm not sure if I can or not. I have a lot going on. I My husband likes for me to feed him at night. It's this really weird thing. He thinks that every night we have to eat something. He calls it dinner. I don't know. <laughs> um, I would actually go not sea glass on this. I would probably go tide pool on this. And then a gray. Look at this. This is what I'm saying. Just mixing and matching colors. Very therapeutic. Very inspiring. This is too dark. Let's go there. So that's a fun palette there as well. So there you have it. I mean, we just put those together. It's been 58 minutes since I started, about-ish. I'm going to actually adhere these all down. And like I said, I will try to get these kind of um, shot and put up on my Instagram so that you guys can see them all. But I really just wanted to take some time and show you guys kind of my process as I play with color. Because I do have my one palette series here on YouTube where I take one palette and I make several projects with that. That is something that I really enjoy. And no, 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 not in the wife makes it. He totally cooks, Marianne. That's not what I was saying at, at, at all. It wasn't like that. We take turns on the days where I work from home um, I'm getting like totally off on a rabbit trail here, but Marianne thought my husband was like, oh, like you have to make dinner every night. I, I need to clarify that for his sake. He's a very good man. On the days that I work from home here, because I'm also a nurse, I generally take care of dinner. And on the days where I am at my nurse job, he generally takes care of dinner. So it's, I'm working from home today. And um, so I really need to figure out what I'm gonna make for dinner. <laughs> Last night I told him, I'm not making dinner, so we had canes. Um, but anyway, I just really wanted to show you guys my process of playing with color. I have my one palette series here on YouTube where I take one palette and I create several projects with it. And it's really fun to see, as I mentioned earlier in this video, how changing how much of one color that you use in your palette really changes the feeling of the overall palette or the overall project. It's also true of changing the tone. So say I take one of these blue greens and I change it out for a slightly different blue green, that can change the vibe of a palette as well. And so it really is fun if you take, even if it's just the card stocks that you already have and just kind of shuffle them around, start playing with them and see how colors interact with each other because it really is an inspiring process. And if you don't know where to start, I showed you where to start today. So if you missed the beginning of this video where we took a couple of the palettes from Concord and Ninth or Christina Werner and we changed them up a little bit, those are always good jumping off points. So you can take a palette that you like parts of, bring in those colors and then kind of substitute out other colors and that really can change up the palette and make it feel a little more customized to you as well. So I hope really looking at all of these things and, and kind of getting to know these colors was fun for you. I've had a great time creating with all of these colors from Concord and Ninth. I think they are so beautiful. I think the way that they have designed their colors to work together is really just a beautiful thing. And you may have colors that are similar to some of these in your stash where you could create similar color combinations. And if you don't have like a color swatching kit, let me see if, I don't know if I have it around here, but you can actually create um, just stamped pieces that you can keep on hand. I'm gonna actually walk away for a second. And I'm gonna show you Guys, I'm not gonna include pictures of this, but you know, just even stamping out colors that you like to work together 
can be a great way and just keeping them in like a small binder or something. This is just a half letter size binder. This can be a great jumping off point for you when you're feeling a little stuck. So these are palettes that I've created with in the past that I've kind of matched up some of the Copic markers for and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of different ways to really keep the palettes alive, but this kind of color swatch book is a fun way to have it just close at hand. So anyway, do you guys have any questions before I pop on out of here? Cause like I said, I gotta go. It's two o'clock here, so I have plenty of time. I can still figure out dinner. It's not gonna be a problem, but I do need to go figure that out. So, um, and then I'm off to my nurse job tomorrow. So um, I would love to answer any questions that you might help have. Martha says this was helpful. I'm so glad that you found this helpful because that's what I really want to help you guys do is just um, kind of let you into my brain and how it works. If I can, um, I can give you a color palette and you can create with that, but if I can teach you to make your own color palette like you teach Amanda Fish, then, um, or teach you the thought process behind how I create my color palettes, then you guys are really um, learning key things that can really take you in. Um, uh, the holder for your color chips is linked where? Are you talking about, let's see, this is from Marianne. I'm having technology issues. Are you talking about this here? This little ring, it's just a binder clip. I'm, I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about, but it's just a binder binder ring. It's just a Office Depot or Amazon or whatever. I don't think I linked that. So anyway, um, uh, let's see. Tiffany, I'm so glad you could be here. I'm glad that you enjoyed this. Laura says she enjoys, uh, they share that the cooking too and she runs out of dinner ideas. My husband was just telling me last night like we eat the same things over and over again. I said, I'm open to suggestions and he didn't have any. So <laughs> we're both out of, it sounds like we're all out of ideas. So I guess we could do the Pinterest thing, um, but I don't, we have allergies in our house, so it's not um, always, those are not always um, the kind of things that we can do. I think a lot of those one pot meals and like the casserole things, they're not super easy for us to do because they, a lot of them involve like cream of chicken or cream of mushroom and we have a dairy allergy in our house. So anyway, well, I want to say thank you all for joining me here today. It was fun chatting with you, interacting with you, creating some new palettes with the new Concord and Ninth 2023 color release. I do have links to the color release in the YouTube description below, as well as the Paper Crafters Get Organized Summit, which is free to you if you want to sign up using that link. Um, so if you want to take part in that, be sure to click that link below. And then be sure to follow me over at Instagram. It's at Carissa Wiley. So it's one R, two S's, W-I-L-E-Y. And that'll do it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on the notifications here on my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my card making and paper crafting video tutorials. Thanks again and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.